Today we celebrate the Feast of Divine Mercy. Um, today is Divine Mercy Sunday. Um, it's also the second Sunday of Easter. Um, we've been celebrating Easter all week, every day, um, for eight days now. And um, when you look at kind of the Easter season, it, it begins with Good Friday. And where we remember um, Jesus' great sacrifice for us on the cross. And we continue with Easter Sunday. And now, seven days later, um, we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. And um, Divine Mercy Sunday helps us to remember um, how much um, God is is, is merciful towards us. um, How he is merciful all the time. Um, that he cannot not be merciful. Um, It's part of who he is, and we can pray for his mercy, we can receive his mercy, and we can extend his mercy to other people. And and so we remember that um, this today. And if you know anything about divine mercy, it's actually connected um, to a a sister, a a nun, um, from Poland. Um, Originally, her name was... Helenica Kolowska. Um, Helenica Kolowska was born in 1905 in Poland. Um, in 1925, when she, when she was 20 years old, um, she joined the congregation of the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy. And she took the religious name Faustina. And later she would become Saint Faustina. And Saint Faustina was actually a really simple person. Um, She wasn't the leader of the community. Um, She was a cook. Um, She was a gardener. Um, She was a doorkeeper. And um, in many ways, um, she was um, not well known by her community. She did the the simple um, tasks that she was asked to do. And and yet, um, God chose her in a special way um, to reveal his divine mercy to, to and, you know, as it, as it went, um, she started to receive um, visions um, from Jesus. And Jesus was speaking to her about um, the mercy of God and how um, that needed to be um, extended throughout the world and in more ways. And um, this is the, the vision of Jesus that she saw right here. Um, he, he, she asked Jesus asked St. Faustina um, to paint this vision. Um, She describes it in her diary. And it's a vision of of Jesus um, standing there, as you can see, um, with his right hand extended in blessing, um, his left hand on his heart. And from his heart, there's two rays. Um, One's a red ray, one's a white ray. Um, The the white ray represents um, baptism, and the waters of baptism, and the red um, represents um, the blood of Jesus, um, the Eucharist, and both of those, baptism and the Eucharist, um, being being poured out into the, all the world um, from the, the sacred heart of Jesus. And, and so it's a, it's a, a powerful image. Um, she had this vision in her mind of what she was supposed to paint um, the, the only problem was that she didn't know how to paint. Um, so she had to, to find someone, and she also had to convince her sisters um, that she was having this vision. And as sisters do sometimes, they did not believe her. Um, they questioned whether it was real. Um, but her, her spiritual director, a priest, um, he, he did believe her. And, and so um, he you know, had someone come and, and help her um, paint this image, and we end up with this divine mercy image. And St. Faustina would spend the rest of her life um, spreading the message of divine mercy, and um, St. Faustina only lived um, for 33 years. So it's interesting. Um, there seems to be times in history where God chooses someone very simple, um, someone um, that's not well known, um, to bring forth something um, special into the world. And St. Faustina 
and was one of those people. And her spiritual director asked her to write everything down in a diary. Um, she was not going to do that, but she was asked to do that, so she did that. And her diary, the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kolowska, the Divine Mercy in My Soul is what it ends up being called, um, has been translated into many, many languages throughout the world. And we actually have some copies available after Mass today. And the other reality with the Divine Mercy is that it probably would not have become well-known, um, except um, for the fact that around 1979, um, we had a Polish Pope. Um, so St. John Paul II was Polish. Um, he knew about St. Faustina. He knew about the Divine Mercy. And you could say this is a divine coincidence, um, or you could say it's a, a God incidence. And I think it really was um, God's will um, in many ways that St. John Paul II would become Pope. And one of the reasons was so he could um, spread this um, devotion, this understanding of God's mercy to the whole world. And he did something very unusual. Um, usually, private revelation remains somewhat private. Um, but this time, um, he made it into a universal feast um, throughout the whole church, the Sunday after Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. Um, if you know anything about the Divine Mercy, um, there's a chaplet of the Divine Mercy um, it's a series of prayers that you pray, um, whereas it takes about 15 minutes to pray the rosary. Um, the Divine Mercy Chapel it takes six or seven minutes, um, so it's, a little, it's nice in that way. And um, it's a very simple prayer. Instead of praying Our Fathers and Hail Marys, um, instead of the Our Father, you end up saying, Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity, of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, an atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. And um, instead of saying the Hail Mary, you say, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And so you go through the five decades of the rosary um, saying these prayers. Um, I, I first heard about the Divine Mercy when I was um, 17 years old. I was in high school. and it definitely had a, an effect on my life, a profound effect. Um, it's a, de a devotion and prayers that I've gone back to um, over and over again. And I've been to St. Faustina's convent in Poland, um, which is also a very um, powerful experience. And, you know, the prayers are, are very easy to memorize, and it's, it's wonderful because you can pray it really at any time, anywhere. Um, as you memorize the prayers. And it's a beautiful prayer to pray um, for yourself, um, to pray for your family, um, to pray for others, and to pray for the whole world, um, that the whole world would become more open um, to God's mercy. Um, I, this, um, recently, I, I wrote a book called The Virtue of Mercy and Forgiveness, um, Keys um, to Healing a Broken Heart, and it's very much connected to this, this theme on, on Divine Mercy. And a lot of times, Divine Mercy Sunday, we focus on, you know, we need to receive God's mercy. And that is very true. Um, but Jesus says, blessed are the merciful, um, for they will be shown mercy. So not only do we need to receive God's mercy, um, we need to extend God's mercy um, to, to others, um, to those around us, maybe to those who have hurt us, um, to those we are struggling to forgive. Um, in my book, I, I talk a lot about um, forgiveness, mercy, and healing, how they're connected. Um, once you learn to be more merciful, um, it's a lot easier to be more forgiving, um, to extend God's forgiveness towards others. And that word mercy actually means compassion, it means having a heart um, for someone um, who's suffering. And it means that your heart is moved, your heart goes out um, towards someone who's suffering. And, you know, of course, God's 
compassion, um, his, his heart goes out to us, and our hearts um, should go out towards others. And sometimes um, they're stu- suffering physically, um, but other times they're, they're just caught, caught in their sins, um, caught in their spiritual darkness, um, caught in being away from God. And even sometimes when their sin affects us and it hurts us, um, we can step back from that and see, well, actually this person is suffering. Um, they, they are trapped in their sin. They are, they are most likely miserable in a lot of different ways. And so I can choose um, to extend God's mercy to them and God's forgiveness. And the beautiful thing about that is um, once you forgive someone, um, then you don't have to be attached to them anymore. Um, you don't have to be attached to them in a negative way, um, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, or physically. Um, you can separate from them. And as a result, um, they no longer um, have power over your life, and you're able to live a much healthier life um, and because the alternative is to be connected to them, um, to be attached to them, um, to be attached to what they did and what they said and how that made you feel. And um, God doesn't want that for us. Um, That's why he commands us um, to forgive and he he commands us um, to be merciful. Um, Today, we we celebrate the Feast of the Divine Mercy. Um, Encourage you to, to consider praying the chaplet today um, especially at 3 o'clock, um, that's the ideal time to pray um, the Chaplet of Divine Mercy at the 3 p.m. hour, the hour that Jesus died. Um, and there's what's called a plenary indulgence um, with the Divine Mercy Sunday in particular. Um, it involves praying the, the Divine Mercy. I'm going to confession or at least going to confession in the last eight days or in the next eight days. Um, receiving Holy Communion, and um, praying um, for the intentions of the Holy Father. And, and so um, it's possible to receive that um, today. And, um, and so um, we, we remember um, today that God is merciful, and that God wants us to be merciful, and that that mercy is available. I want to just share one last thing from, from the diary of St. Faustina, and these are her words. And she has something very interesting to say about suffering. Um, a lot of times we think of suffering maybe a little different than she did, um, and yet um, her perspective is one that we can adopt for her ourselves. And so I'm just going to conclude with this. Um, she says, suffering is the greatest treasure on earth. It purifies the soul. In suffering, we learn who is our true friend. True love is measured by the thermometer of suffering. Jesus, I thank you for the little daily crosses, for opposition to my endeavors, for the hardships of communal life, for the misinterpretation of my intentions, for humiliations at the hands of others, for the harsh way in which we are treated, for false suspicions, for poor health and loss of strength, for self-denial, for dying to myself, for the lack of recognition in everything, for the upsetting of my plans. Thank you, Jesus, for interior sufferings, for dryness of spirit, for terrors, fears, incertitudes, for the darkness and the deep interior night, um, for temptations and various ordeals, for torments too difficult to describe, especially for those which no one will understand, for the hour of death um, with its fierce struggle and all its bitterness. So St. Faustina, you know, amazingly is attempting to thank Jesus for all these things. Um, She goes on, I thank you, Jesus, you who first drank the cup of bitterness, which you gave before you gave it to me. 
in a much milder form. I put my lips to this cup of your holy will. Let all be done according to your good pleasure. Let that which your wisdom ordained before the ages be done to me. I want to drink the cup to its last drop and not seek to know the reason why. In bitterness is my joy. In hopelessness is my trust. In you, O oh Lord, all is good. All is a gift of your paternal heart. I do not prefer consolations over bitterness or bitterness over consolations, but thank you, O oh Jesus, for everything. It is my delight to fix my gaze upon you, O oh incomprehensible God. My spirit abides in these mysterious dwelling places, and there I am at home. I know very well the dwelling place of my spouse. I feel there is not a single drop of blood in me that does not burn with love for you. O oh, uncreated beauty, whoever comes to know you once cannot love anything else. I can feel the bottomless abyss of my soul, and nothing will fill it but God himself. I feel that I am drowned in him like a single grain of sand in a bottomless ocean. And so this morning, we, we do thank God for um, the sufferings that he gives us in our lives, um, for the opportunities that he gives us um, to draw closer to him, um, to rely on him, to depend on him, um, to give us strength to overcome our sufferings. And we thank Jesus for um, giving us the example of um, enduring um, suffering out of love for us. And we pray that we too might be able to endure our sufferings out of love for him. And we pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 